1045, the team, you're home for New York sports. We're your home for Yankees baseball, so we want to get your take. Uh, I'll, st- I'll, I'll lead it off with the fact that in 2014, you were at the Yankees, right? That was Derek Jeter's last year. You were a part of that in two different ways. Let's talk about the first way, uh, being a teammate with Derek Jeter. What are your thoughts of him as a teammate? Amazing guy. I mean, takes the time for everyone, and he obviously faced that franchise and almost pretty much baseball. So, you know, coming over and being a, a, you know, a guy that watched him make his debut and, and then get a chance to play with him, it was just special moment uh being able to play next to him got to start at third that that season so i'm playing there next to him kind of looking over there just you know it's hard to you gotta pinch yourself uh so like i said i I mentioned it later on that season you end up at yankee stadium for his last game just in a baltimore orioles uniform now my question for you this one i'll start off i'll start off with the easy question how awesome was that moment to be to witness yeah that was a special moment i mean it was uh, hard to hard to take just because you're competing and um, seeing it from the other side. But after the fact, you know, when we walked off the field to turn around and spend that next like 30 minutes, you know, watching him get emotional, and make the make the speeches, and uh, you know, grab the dirt and, and get out there at his position that last time. I mean, I got it on my phone. I mean, I recorded that. You know, I'm a fan just like anyone else. So that's special. The hard question comes for me in this, uh, and you could talk on behalf of yourself or Buck Showalter or or, or whatnot. Derek Jeter is known for most of his career as an in-and-out swing, and I couldn't help but noticing. Obviously, I was, for a whole hour, I was yelling. I was on college that day. I was out yelling on the campus. But then I look back and I say, what's with the defensive lineman on that play? Anything fishy there, or was that just a... Uh... No fishy. Oh, here's how I'll explain it, because I just had to talk about this uh, to one of the guys. <laughs> Quentin Richardson, who I, I knew from spring training that year, uh, and maybe the fastest guy in the big leagues at the time, was on second base, pinch running. I did not want to hold him on. I wanted Hardy to, but for whatever reason, he was pull, he was being pushed off and, and bringing me over there. So I tried my best to clap him. Knew he was going to steal. It's, it's a, it's, you know, he's going to run. I mean, so in my mind, so I'm I'm trying to get back as far as I can. The probably more baffling, head scratching thing to me is the pitch selection being a baby little cutter on the outside <laughs> part of the plate. Now, obviously, yeah. in a perfect world. Um, you know, you can position yourself exactly where you want. A little bit of confusion there with the base runner and the situation. So it is what it is. So if I remember correctly, you played for every AL East team, right? And the Mets. And the Mets, of course. <laughs> and the Braves, obviously. You're wearing the Braves jersey right. today. <laughs> <laughs> what is, is there one team that you look back on the most, like any year? Not necessarily, you know, even if it's a, that Yankee Diamond team that X. you just remember, you know, that was your favorite? Yeah, it's hard to choose one. I mean, just the ones that stand out, obviously with the Braves, that's who drafted me, and that's where I came up, spent the most time. Um, Arizona, I had my, my best year of my career in 2010 there, and then uh, we went to the World Series as a Met, and that team was special. Uh, it was very recent, you know, so um, those three seasons and, in, in, or you know, times in my life were probably the most memorable for sure. Kelly Johnson, thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, man.